Hi boys and girls, this is Grandma Sheila again. I'm glad to be back with you. Our story today is called, I Can Sleep Through the Storm. Well, our story's about Charlie. Now, Charlie had had some really good things in his life and some really bad things. Might have found he had been born to good Christian parents that loved him so much. And they taught him all about Jesus. They taught him all about God's good rules, the Ten Commandments. They taught him not to steal, not to lie. And they loved Charlie most of all. Charlie was their only little boy. And Charlie, he was growing up to be a good boy. Everybody liked him because he did his chores without being asked. He took very careful care of the animals on the farm where he lived with his parents. And he was kind to the other boys and girls. He acted like Jesus. And his mommy and daddy loved him dearly. And he loved them right back. That was the good part. Then one day, and the story doesn't tell whether it was an accident or whether there was a bad disease going around, but mommy and daddy both died. And poor Charlie, he had nobody. The local church and the local agency for orphans looked around for a place for Charlie to go live. They didn't want to put him in an orphanage if they didn't have to. Well, one day, they told Charlie, there is a farmer. He has a big farm, and he's willing to take a little boy. Would you be willing to go there and live with the farmer and his wife? And Charlie went, mm-hmm. So the next day, Charlie was taken to the farm. Now, first of all, I need to tell you that the farmer and his wife were both very kind, good people, but the farmer was very stern. And he expected things to be done right. And the farmer's wife, she was good to Charlie, but she wasn't overly friendly and loving, and poor Charlie. But he remembered all the things that his mommy and daddy had taught him. And you know, in his little bedroom, he thought, I still want to make mommy and daddy proud of me. So every morning, he got up really early with the farmer and he went out to the barn and he helped milk the cows and he helped feed the chickens. He threw out the feed for them. He helped clean out the stalls with a great big pitchfork. He put the animals in to the pastures. He made sure that they had plenty of water when they were in the barn, he made sure they had a clean place to live. He made sure they were fed and watered. And he was gentle with the animals. He would go down through the stalls of the different animals every morning. And he would talk to them. He would pat them and tell them what good cows they were for giving such wonderful milk. And the horses 
and he talked to the chickens when he fed them. And when night would come, before he went into the house for his supper, he did several other things. He remembered his father telling him, do your best every day. Do what you know to do. And you will be able to sleep through the storm. Well, when he was little, he had thought about that and thought it didn't make too much sense. But he still did everything his father had told him. So when evening came, he shooed all the chickens into their chicken coop. And he made sure that they had water and they had some feed in their little feeder. And he told them good night and he shut the chicken coop's door securely and he latched it and he went around and he checked the windows to make sure that they were hooked from the inside and that none of them had gotten broken for any reason. Then he left the chicken yard and he shut the gate on it. Now their chickens didn't just run all over the farm. They stayed in this nice big fenced in enclosure. But you know, Things like hawks can swoop down and take away a chicken and have it for dinner. Well, he didn't want anything to happen to the farmer's chickens. So he put them away every night in their little house and he locked the, the gate to that enclosure so no animal or anything could get in there. Then he would go to the barn and he would check to make sure that every cow, that every cow was in its stall. And he made sure that behind the cows was clean. And he made sure that they had water and that they had food. They had hay in the manger in front of them. When he'd finished with the cows, he went over to the horses and he made sure their stalls were clean and they had food and water and all the stalls were shut tight. Then he would take the big broom and he would sweep the aisles in front of all the animals and behind them where they went into the stalls. He would put that in the wheelbarrow and he would take it out to the big pile that they put all the manure and all the old hay in. Then he would go around the outside of the barn. He would shut every door to the barn and he would shake it to make sure it was securely shut. Then he would go around. On, before he'd done that, he would go around inside the barn to make sure all the windows were secure and locked. When he left, he checked that door again. And he knew that all the animals were securely and safely inside. Now all the tools he used, like the rake and the hoe, the shovel, he would put all the tools into the tool shed. And he would shut that door and check the little windows. He went all over the barn and the farm area to make sure 
that everything was secure and put away. And then he would go to the big grain bins, which is where they took the, the grain out to feed the, the horses and the animals. And he would make sure that the door was securely shut. You know, he checked that grain bin bin in the daytime as well. Because if for some reason the animals could get out of the pasture and back where the grain bin was, they could eat themselves to death. So he made sure that everything was closed. And when he came in to go to the house. He didn't just go stomping in with mud on his feet or possibly manure, pew, from the barn. He carefully cleaned off his shoes and he took them off. He put them on the little rug in the mud room and then he would go inside and he would make sure his hands were clean and his face was clean and that he had nothing icky like manure on his clothes before he went to the farmer's wife table to eat. And you know, when he sat down at the table, he was very careful to eat all the food that he had taken. And he was very careful to look and make sure that there was enough for the farmer and his wife. He was very kind. And you know what he did when he got done eating? When he sat there quietly, if he got done first, and he would answer politely the farmer and his wife if they asked questions. And when everyone was done, he would pick up his plate and his cup and his silverware and he would take them into the kitchen and he'd turn on the water faucet and he would wash all the food off of them. And he would set them in a stack. And then when the farmer's wife went to wash the dishes, he would grab a dish towel and he would start wiping those dishes dry and he would put them away and he carefully hung up the towel. Well then, it was time for him to take his bath. He made sure that he didn't splash water all over everything. He made sure his towel was hung up neatly and he brushed his teeth and he got ready for when he was going to go to bed after and after his bath, he would go sit in the living room with the farmer and his wife, and they would have worship. Now, he liked worship because that reminded him of home, and he knew all the Bible stories, and he could answer all the questions. And when it was time, eight o'clock, it was time for him to go to bed. Charlie would not fuss. He willingly went up to his room. Well, he had some things to play with, and there was a playtime as well. Before he went upstairs, he went to the farmer, and he went to his wife, and he politely said good night. And he would reach out and give each of them a hug. Time passed, and every day was pretty much the same for Charlie, until fall came and school started again. And Charlie, he went to school every day, and then he still had to fit his, his chores on the farm. So he, would, he did his best in school, and then he would rush home so that he could help with the chores and do all the jobs that needed to be done. The weather was turning cold. 
and it was obviously getting toward winter. Charlie, he did all the stuff I told you about. He didn't forget, even for one day. Now, these weren't things that the farmer had told him to do necessarily. The farmer watched him and seemed pleased with what he did. But I don't think that he knew all the stuff that Charlie did for him. Well, one night, the farmer woke up in the night and he could hear the wind whistling around the outside of the house. And he could hear the limbs of the trees banging against the side of the house. And he thought, oh no, it's a storm. I wonder if the animals are safe. I wonder, I should get Charlie up and we can go out and check everything. He went into Charlie's room and he said, Charlie, get up, there's a storm. And Charlie rolled over and he looked at the farmer. He was tired. And he said, I can sleep through the storm. And the farmer didn't understand that. He just thought that Charlie was really sleepy. And he said, Oh, all right, go back to sleep. I'll call you if I need you. So the farmer went downstairs into the mudroom and he put on his coat he put on his hat and he put the scarf around his neck and gloves on his hands. And he went out into that wind. He couldn't hardly stand up. The wind was beating him this way and that way. First of all, he went to the grain bin but the door was securely latched. Then he went to the chicken yard. The chicken yard was securely latched. He went inside and the chicken door and all the windows were closed. Good. Then he went out, he latched the gate again. Then he went to the barn and he walked around the outside of the barn. Now the wind was so bad, there were branches blowing. They had broken off the trees and they were blowing this way and that way and hitting against the sides of the barn. And he could hear the animals inside. He thought, the animals are afraid. When he'd walked around, every single door was closed. Every single window was shut and latched. Even the dog's house had been turned so that the dog could get in it. But most of their wind came from the north. So the dog house was turned so that the wind wouldn't go in and blow on the dog. The farmer was amazed. He went inside the barn. The animals didn't like the sound of that storm. But they were warm. Their stalls were clean. They were latched shut. They all had water. They all had food. And when the farmer walked along behind them and patted their rumps, they turned their heads around and the cows went contentedly and then he went to the horses and he patted them and then he noticed that all the horses had been brushed and their feet were all clean he thought wow and when he patted the horses they turned around and they neighed but it wasn't, they weren't talking, the, the animals weren't, because they weren't cared for. The farmer thought 
I couldn't have done a better job myself. And then the farmer thought of what Charlie had said. I can sleep through the storm. And the farmer thought, no wonder he can sleep through the storm. He has everything ready every single day. And the farmer was very thankful to have Charlie. You know, boys and girls, that's the way you and I should be. We should do everything we know to do to keep everything we have well taken care of and safe so that we could sleep through the storm just like Charlie did. And you know what? Someday Jesus is going to come and he's going to take us home. And he wants us to be ready, just like Charlie was ready for the storms. He wants us to be ready and have our heart all clean and follow all of his good rules. So that when Jesus comes, he'll say, welcome boys and girls. I'll see you next week now. Bye-bye.